Yo, what up guys? It's your boy, The Gambler Reviews, back with another video. And this one is not a movie review. I wanted to talk about a certain film coming out real soon that I don't think is getting talked about as much as it should. And that is Transformers Rise of the Beast. I think this movie could be one of the biggest movies of the year, possibly even a billion dollar movie. And we're gonna talk about why. All right guys, here are five reasons why I think Transformers Rise of the Beast will be a billion dollar film this year and will be one of the top grossing movies. Number one, the Transformers franchise is one of the biggest film franchise there is. I feel like people forget how big the Transformers franchise is. Putting aside the Michael Bay sequels, The Last Night was terrible, Age of Extinction was bad, Revenge of the Fallen was bad, Dark of the Moon, I actually like Dark of the Moon, but a lot of people did not like it. Look, my point is, when the first Transformers movie came out, and granted, yes, that was probably the best Transformers movie out of the Michael Bay directed ones, but still, when that first movie came out, it exceeded expectations and grossed almost $800 million, and it was a film franchise that people were not sure about before the movie came out. I remember in 2007, before the Transformers movie was out, Normies kind of viewed Transformers as this dumb toy brand, kind of like Hot Wheels, and this dumb cartoon that they make their kids watch on a Saturday morning. It was not taken as a serious franchise. But when that movie came out, all of a sudden, you had people who never once in their lives ever thought of Transformers start talking about, oh, is Optimus related to Megatron? And what's this and that about the lore? That first movie really showed how Transformers is potentially a gigantic franchise. Even with the release of Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen, and all the issues that that movie dealt with with the writer's strike, and it just being genuinely considered one of the worst movies of the 2000s decades, even that, got close to a billion dollars, even with the bad, horrible reviews. Imagine if Revenge of the Fallen came out, and it wasn't even amazing, it was just better than the 2007 Transformers movie. That's an easy billion dollar movie without the help of 3D or any of these gimmicks that we have now. Now come Dark of the Moon, Dark of the Moon did have the 3D gimmicks, but it was also panned by critics, but it still cracked a billion dollars. And if I'm not mistaken, it's probably like the second or third highest grossing movie of 2011. All I'm trying to say here is Transformers is such a big franchise that even if the movies get horrible reviews and they get shot on 24 seven, they still make at least 600, 700 million dollars in their sleep. Guys, even Transformers The Last Night, which I think is the worst Transformers movie, and this is coming from a Transformers fan. Transformers The Last Night, the one Transformers movie I didn't watch it in theaters. Even that movie made $700 million. So, and that movie was what, five, six years ago? It wasn't that long ago. So I'm telling you guys, do not sleep on Transformers Rise of the Beast. Early reactions so far are saying that this movie is comparable to the first Transformers movie and Bumblebee. So this movie is not gonna blow your brains out, but Transformers movies don't need to be masterpieces. If they could just be decent, good movies, I'm telling you, the box office potential is the sky's the limit with that. All right, my number two reason why I think this movie can definitely break that billion dollar mark. What was the last Transformers movie before Rise of the Beast? It was Bumblebee. I mean, sure, Bumblebee wasn't a gigantic hit, but I honestly think that is just because it had way too much competition coming out in the same weekend. It had Aquaman and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse coming out in the same weekend, and it just couldn't compete. But even then, it still broke even. It still made over $300 million, close to $400 million. And that was just a Transformers spinoff. That wasn't a mainline movie. Now, that movie on top of making a decent chunk of money was critically acclaimed. People loved Bumblebee in a way that they haven't loved the Transformers movie since the 2007 film. And Transformers Rise of the Beast, granted it is coming a bit late, like six years later after Bumblebee, it still has a little bit of that momentum building from the first Bumblebee movie because this is clearly a sequel to the first Bumblebee movie. That first Bumblebee movie, you could tell by watching that it's kind of a soft reboot of the franchise. The robot designs are closer to the G1 cartoon characters 
The overall tone is a lot less gritty than the Michael Bay movies. The jokes are less sexual. It's more kid friendly, if you will, but in a good way. And this Transformers Rise of the Beast seems to be following in that tradition and making it clear that this is related to the Bumblebee canon and not really the 07 Michael Bay canon, which I feel like in terms of quality, people are gonna have higher hopes for this movie. My number three reason why I think this movie can break records this summer is cause early reactions have already been coming out and they seem unusually positive for a Transformers movie. People are saying this is as good as the 07 or the Bumblebee movie. And honestly, all it takes for a Transformers movie is to just be a good movie and it can break records. The 07 movie was not a perfect movie by the least, but it gave audiences what they crave. It gave them exhilarating action, fun characters, cool cars, hot women, and the story was relatively decent for a movie based off toys. And it shattered expectations. It made almost $800 million. Now, this movie is getting good reviews, which nowadays, a great determinator of how well a movie will fare at the box office is with the Rotten Tomato score. I believe the Rotten Tomato score, based off the early reviews, will be probably hovering around 80%, which for Transformers is amazing. And that, I think, will skyrocket its opening weekend to probably over $100 million. And this movie, I feel like it will have legs because the audiences it's gonna attract it's gonna be basically the boy version of the Barbie movie. It's gonna slowly build hype and you're gonna have a lot of family and kids watch this cause it is marketing itself as the spiritual successor to Bumblebee, which is a more lighthearted Transformers rather than a Michael Bay movie where you, know, you don't know what you're gonna get. You don't know if you're gonna get an ass shot opening scene. This movie is more guaranteed to not have stuff like that. And I think families are gonna come in droves to watch this movie. Guys, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit. My fifth and final reason why Transformers Rise of the Beast, I think will make a billion dollars is actually kind of two reasons. And I'll just put that as one reason. So, Part one of two is that this movie is not really having a lot of competition. Now hear me out, hear me out. A lot of you will be like, what are you talking about no competition? There's the Little Mermaid that just came out. You have Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. You have the Flash coming right after and then Indiana Jones and the Pixar movie Elementals coming right after. Hear me out. Little Mermaid will be in the second week and I think it already made the most of its or not yet, but I think Little Mermaid will have already made the most of its money by the time Transformers comes out. And also they are kind of two different demographics. Little Mermaid is more targeted towards, you know, moms and daughters and like female audiences and like, that's cool. Transformers is more targeted towards boys and it is coming around Father's Day. So probably a lot of dads will take their sons. So you could say it's comparable to that, but I feel like a lot of the people that are going to watch Transformers were not going to watch Little Mermaid and a lot of people that were going to watch Little Mermaid were not going to watch Transformers. So I don't think it's fair to say that the two movies are really competing against each other. And then you have Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which yes, it is competition. It's coming a week apart from Transformers. You have to understand, I feel like Transformers will obviously make more money than Spider-Verse, okay? So that's not saying Spider-Verse is gonna be a worse movie. Spider-Verse is probably gonna be the better movie, but the original Spider-Verse, you have to keep in mind, it only made like, what, $300 million, which is good money compared to its budget, but it doesn't have the history of Transformers regularly cracking either near a billion or over a billion, and that's, with the movies being badly received that it cracked a billion dollars with Age of Extinction and Dark of the Moon. Now, a good Transformers movie, the sky's the limit with how much it could make. So I feel like Into the Spider-Verse, I feel like it will kind of steal audiences from Elementals. And Elementals, I don't think will be much of a threat because Elementals is a new property. No, it's not a sequel, it's not a remake, it's not a pre-existing. Uh, it's not a pre-existing material, so pe audiences will be less familiar with it. And also, the ratings have not been so good so far. For a Pixar movie, the ratings have been actually kind of disastrous, which I think uh, will, might tank the movie, to be honest. I think Transformers Rise of the Beast has a good chance of being number one on the second weekend as well. Uh, if I remember correctly, Elementals is the movie coming after it. Uh, I have to double check that. And as for The Flash, I'm really excited for The Flash, actually, despite the Ezra Miller drama. 
But the issue with the Flash is I I do think the Ezra Miller controversy will slowly catch up to it. People have kind of forgotten about it now. Once the whole press rounds and interviews start, inevitably Ezra Miller's situation will be brought up often and I think people will start remembering all the horrible things he did uh, last year. And I think it will probably hurt. I don't, I'm not saying it will tank the Flash, but I think it will a little bit hurt the Flash's box office potential. So Transformers might be an option for a lot of people that weren't even considering to watch Transformers, but probably wanted to watch a movie the weekend The Flash comes out. And a lot of people will just say, hey, you know what? I don't feel comfortable watching The Flash because of uh, Ezra Miller. Uh, what else is out? And then Transformers, assuming it has good ratings and well received, people will be like, you know what? I wasn't planning to watch Transformers, but I'll watch Transformers. And then people will watch it. And then the word of mouth will spread. And that movie will just spread like wildfire i feel like as for indiana jones i feel like it's released too far ahead of transformers to impact the box office much and also indiana jones is also suffering from negative reviews and uh i think that will kind of tank its box office i think indiana jones was the other billion dollar movie potential i think the early reviews kind of backfired on disney on that they probably thought that it was going to get rave reviews but it didn't it got mixed reviews and it's hurting indiana jones that is part one of my fifth reason why I think Transformers will make a billion dollars. And then part two of my reason is this movie is adapting Beast Wars. Now listen, you guys might laugh at it. You guys might be like, who the hell cares about Beast Wars? So Transformers fans or hardcore fans care about Beast Wars, but hear me out. When the first Transformers movie came out in 2007, the whole concept of filming a car or a truck or an airplane turn into a fighting robot, that hasn't really been done on screen in live action before. So that was kind of a novel, cool thing that people really were curious about watching at the theaters. But that novelty has worn off after seven Transformers movies. So now the Transformers franchise needs to reinvent itself. I know they had the dragon Transformers in Age of Extinction, but they were there for like two minutes and they barely contributed to the plot and the design of them were pretty ugly but in this movie they're doing beast wars and it looks pretty cool it's not just random dino bots it's like every beast character in this movie seems to have their own personality and you could easily distinguish against them and yeah i think the transformers franchise needed to add a new twist to the films and the Beast Wars angle is an interesting angle that we haven't really seen before. It'll be explored a lot further in this one and it was an Age of Extinction. I think that has potential of attracting a lot of people who lost fate in the franchise. And I think with the good reviews, it's gonna cement their will to go back and watch this movie. All right guys, thanks again for watching this video. I really appreciate you guys subscribing and supporting my channel. We just hit 300 subscribers at the end of May, so I'm glad that we finally hit that, but the goal now is to hit a thousand subscribers, so please subscribe, hit the like button, share this video if you want, please, 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 everything, every little thing you do helps this channel grow a lot, so I really appreciate everything you do. If you have any questions, concerns, or you want to debate something I've mentioned here, feel free to send me a comment on this video and I will definitely get back to you. Thanks again for watching guys and stay tuned for my review of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse coming super soon.